So guys, JP in another video for you guys. In today's video, we're just going to get straight into it. We're going to be having questions from you guys out there. I've got some really good questions to answer. So what I'm going to do is going to be like a Q&A from my favourite YouTubers. And I'm just going to answer them questions for you. Hopefully you'll like it. Please remember subscribe, rate and comment. Hit that notification bell, guys. If you've not hit that notification. And also, guys, if you want to be part of any of my videos, any of the Q&As, any of the ones where I want you guys involved, follow me on Instagram, follow me on Facebook, at JP's Pet Nation. And you can be part of it, guys, because I do love hearing from you guys. So, first question is from Lee. So, let's get over to his question now. Okay, so my question for you is this. Obviously, we're in a global crisis, you know, greenhouse gases, global warming. Uh, everything's got a carbon footprint. Everyone's got to cut down this to make the planet a better place. So, as a supplier and a keeper, you'd know that, obviously, uh, all the import and export of these, these pets obviously has quite a big carbon footprint. So my question for you is, as a supplier, how do you do your bit to um, be an ethical supplier? You know, uh, with the recycling, the, the, you know, the no use of plastics, the carbon footprint from import and export. What's your views on that? And how do you try to be an ethical supplier? A question by me. So as in that nation, what do we do to help the environment kind of thing? So the first thing we do, we use 100% recyclable packing peanuts so basically when these get wet they'll just disintegrate and just go absolutely amazing really good for the environment and just disappear and it's like a glue here a glue also guys your kids can use these for like pretty sticks and to glue things up as well which is pretty cool add a bit of water and to be able to do it we also reuse boxes as well guys and newspapers stuff like that so we if we get boxes in from our stock we will send them out and reuse them guys as well also guys we are 100% going to try and get some more recyclable tubs all our tubs at the moment are can we say at the bottom 100% recyclable and they're made out of recyclable materials as well which is pretty good we also reuse our tubs as well guys nothing goes to waste um, on the other side of it like the feed inside of it and all that stuff because we keep millipedes and we keep other animals like that as well everything we use in the house goes to recyclable so things like from i don't know your carrots what you don't eat or anything like that they're going to the millipedes enclosures they'll eat them i would last week my cleanup crew will love them so we recycle a lot of things a lot of plastics a lot of papers basically anything that's recyclable will be recycled in the house as well um the way that we make sure that we're not causing a massive problem uh, from importing and exporting. What I do, I only make big orders, so I will only order once a month or once every two months, and I'll make a massive order. This saves a lot of money on us. This also saves a lot of money on the air miles as well, guys, because again, you don't want to just be sending them out for the fun of it. Does that make sense? And also, with massive imports, we work with other companies for massive imports as well, so it saves a lot of money there, and also, it saves the environment because it means you know we can all do it at one time instead of separate times um basically yeah we just recycle as much as we can and what we get given to us like boxes packing peanuts or whatever from our uh, from opening stuff we will send them back out and hopefully they'll get reused again same as these tubs and stuff like that hopefully that'll answer your question lee great question though guys great question lee next question is from Ben and that is so guys this is my question for JP and I'm wondering if you had to get another animal that's not an invertebrate what would you get Great question Ben so the only animals I would keep myself so any animal apart from in bed any animal my main animal in my life would obviously be a, a crocodilian because I've done a lot of research in them that was why I studied at college and university was the crocodilian side of it all and the venomous snakes so my dream if i had all the money in the world i had all the license and everything would be an american alligator because they're such an intelligent creature just so amazing but in realistically i think things like day geckos i've already got two day geckos but i love a couple of more day geckos or some crested geckos or something what i really love to keep um would have to be a banana ball python absolutely gorgeous the beautiful white and yellows on them they're absolutely a stunning snake to keep and just absolutely beautiful one of the best morphs in my opinion absolutely beautiful so hopefully that'll answer them questions okay guys next question is from scott and this is scott's question let's get on with it hi jp it's scott from scott's inverts my question for you is 
when you're in the invert shed by yourself, what guilty pleasure do you listen to while you're feeding the inverts when there's nobody else around? Great question, Scott. So, to be honest, I'll be honest with you, I don't listen to a lot of music, if I'm honest with you guys. Um, when I'm in the yard, I'm in here for about three, four, five hours at a time. So, I listen to a lot of uh, podcasts. So, things like Wrestle Talk TV or Cultaholic uh, podcasts because they're on for about an hour. So, it kills about an hour. So, just them talking a lot of rubbish about wrestling, which I do enjoy quite a lot, if I'm honest with you, because it's just a lot of random stuff and they talk about stuff what's in the like behind the scenes and all that. Also, another things I do listen to, I listen to a couple of YouTubers as well. Um, I listen to I listen to Brian Barcheck as well. Um, his daily vlogs, they um, I listen to them daily. I don't might not agree with everything he does, but you know it passes time, passes thirteen minutes. I don't actually listen to a lot of music. If I'm honest with you guys, I just listen to a lot of uh, random podcasts. If I'm honest with you, more than anything, because it just passes more time. Um, yeah. Sorry, it's nothing interesting, but yeah, that is literally all I do. And if I was going to pick some music I'll listen to in here, it'll have to be Ed Sheeran or something like that, because you know that's my life, in it. All right, thank you, Scott, for your question. That was absolutely amazing. My next question is from Adam. Adam, this is an absolutely amazing question. Let me send you over to him now and let him introduce the question. Hello everybody, the Inverter Bear in here and hello JP, Happy New Year to you all. My question to you is, who has been most influential to you in your life between David Attenborough and the late Steve Irwin? Give reasons as to why, whichever your choices have been more influential to you as a person. Or, failing that, somebody else, give us a reason who and why. Thank you very much. Question by Adam. Two of the most biggest people in this in the animal world, to be honest, has done a lot of things with animals. Steve Irwin was the guy who made, you know, he's showing you a different way to the crocodiles. When I was growing up, he was the one I used to watch all the time. I, my dream was to go to um, Australia Zoo, and what he was doing, the research he was doing, and the uh, amount of people who was watching him with all these crocodiles and these venomous snakes and showing them off and actually doing something good for the world is amazing. The way he did it, yes, I'm not, I know it's very controversial, but I absolutely had dedicated my life to being just like him when I was younger. He was amazing. He was getting everyone ha hyped up about it. Um, he was showing crocodiles in a different way, showing venomous snakes, and he was hands-on, and I love to be hands-on, guys, so this is why he was my inspiration. The truth is, he was an amazing guy. He did a lot of good things for... The animals, you know, his zoo is still doing a lot of good things now. And his family is obviously carrying his name on. They've done a lot of rescues over there. And he did do a lot of good things. And he has done a good lot, uh, a lot of good things. And without Steve Irwin, the truth is, I don't think there would have been a, um, a highlight on certain animals like crocodiles and stuff like that. And, you know, what he did was amazing. He, it's conservation work, not just as TV should. Conservation work changed a lot of people's views and stuff like that so when he went over to Komodo Dragon to to see the Komodo Dragons he was getting up close and personal with these giant monsters and it's just amazing to see a guy get that up and close with them and he didn't fear them he had respect for them and yeah he was just absolutely an amazing guy and he's changed a lot of people's lives and got a lot of people into this hobby it went into the reptile hobby should we say um and then the next one this is going to be a lot harder to say but Mr. Sir Attenborough, he is a completely different guy. He's there to educate you, to talk to you. So when you're watching a BBC show, he's there on there. And you know it's going to be good because what he says is just amazing. And he has taught you to places where a lot of people haven't been to. But truthfully, my, it's got to be Steve Aaron for me. But they're both absolutely amazing and done a lot for this animals, for this hobby or the hobbyist and the animals. He's just done a lot of stuff there, both of them are absolutely amazing men they are. And Mr Attenborough is the voice of the wildlife. Without him, I don't think, you know, you don't think about any of the animals, what, what he sees. You know what I mean, guys? All right, guys, hopefully that will answer your question, and that is Steve Irwin all the way. But that's no disrespect to Mr Sir David Attenborough. He's an amazing guy as well. Okay guys, thank you so much for watching. Please remember to check out this video. This was the first video I did on the Millennium. 
um, absolutely amazing video guys also remember to subscribe to my channel and also check out the videos down below if there is any guys and that's the videos YouTube have chosen for you to watch yourself and also that's the playlist of 2020 all right guys thank you so much for watching and hope you enjoyed today's video please leave a comment and I'll see you in the next video bye bye bye